Okay, so the big financial news story this week is that over the last few years, investors have been diversifying into bonds backed by the crime proceeds of Italy's most powerful mafia, according to the Financial Times. It even turns out that some of the bonds were bought by Banca Generale, one of Europe's largest private banks. All in, about a billion dollars worth of these bonds were sold to investors between 2015 and 2019. Investors included pension funds, hedge funds, and family offices, all looking for exotic ways of earning high returns at a time of record low interest rates. Back in 2008, the Occupy Wall Street movement started calling investment bankers banksters, and I guess this possibly inspired the idea of actual bonds from actual gangsters. So how did it work? How can a mobster issue a bond? And does it make sense for you to have some mafia bonds in your retirement account? Are these bonds a yield you can't refuse? Okay, so under EU law, overdue invoices owed by state-connected entities incur a guaranteed penalty interest rate. This means that these debts are well suited for packaging into asset-backed securities. I have a video, in fact, explaining what asset-backed securities are, and I'll link to that above. But basically, an asset-backed security gathers a large pool of assets, things like home mortgages, credit card receivables, or in this case, the proceeds of organized crime, and issues bonds backed by their expected cash flows. So, how do the Italian Mafia fit in here? Calabria is not only the poorest region in Italy, but it's actually one of the most deprived regions in the EU. Its GDP per capita is around 20,000 US dollars a year, which is about half of the European average. A US diplomatic cable back in 2008 noted that if it were not part of Italy, Calabria would be a failed state. The Calabrian Mafia is known as the Indragida, the name originates from the Greek word for courage. They control a large part of cocaine importation into Europe, along with arms dealing, extortion, and cross-border money laundering. Even with such lucrative criminal activities, the opportunity to plunder the Italian public health system stood out as a golden opportunity. By bribing local government officials, organized criminals made huge profits from contracts given to their own front companies. Building monopolies on everything from delivering patients in unsafe ambulances to transporting blood and organs to taking away the dead from the hospitals. The Mafia's grip was apparently so tight that doctors reported to having to wait outside a hospital ward for mobsters to come along and unlock the door and let them in. So all of these Mafia-provided medical services were billed to the Italian taxpayer through the country's health service with its multi-billion dollar budget. From 2015 through to 2018, hundreds of millions of euros of invoices, signed off by officials in Calabria's municipal health system, were purchased by intermediaries. These middlemen bought the unpaid invoices from suppliers at a discount because they were, in effect, guaranteed by the Italian state. They were then sold on to specialist financial companies who pooled them and sold bonds backed by the unpaid bills. Now, while many legitimate companies in Italy use this process to offload legitimate debts owed to them by the healthcare system, the complex chain of intermediaries left it vulnerable to exploitation by organized criminals. Front companies for the Calabrian Mafia managed to offload invoices owed to them to unwitting intermediaries who then sold them on to financial companies. They then packaged them up into specialized debt products, marketed them to investors hungry for exotic, higher-yielding bonds at a time of record low interest rates. That's how you get to having mobster bonds in your retirement account. The FT reports that as different crime families grew wealthy, their younger generations have started to look very different from the rural bandits of their grandfather's era. A new class of mobster emerged that can apply business school analysis to the challenges of running an international criminal conspiracy. 
The Graham Stefan channel here on YouTube promotes itself as teaching finance to millennials, and I thought that maybe my niche could be teaching quantitative finance to millennial mafiosi. If you do happen to speak Italian and you watch these videos, do feel free to upload Italian subtitles to my YouTube videos so that I can grow my mafia following. Anna Sergi, a Calabrian-born criminologist at the University of Essex, told the FT that this new generation of mobsters live outside of Calabria and appear to be respectable business people, not directly involved in street-level illegality, but instead they offer technical expertise when it's needed. I'm going to guess that they claim when they talk to their friends that they work for their family's olive oil export business. None of the bonds in question were raised or assessed by major credit rating agencies, or even traded on financial markets. Instead, they were privately placed by boutique investment banks, several of which have offices in Mayfair, the City of London, and so on. Ernest and Young ended up providing consulting services for the structuring of one of the vehicles, which was then purchased by Banca Generale, according to the FT. They were, however, not required to do any due diligence on the assets making up the portfolio, apparently. The human cost of years of looting Calabria's healthcare system has been devastating for Italy. Italy is one of the highest life expectations in the world, but Calabria's health statistics are amongst the worst in Europe. Calabria ends up having the highest rate of infant mortality in Italy, and many Calabrians are forced to leave the region to get treatment in better hospitals in the north of Italy. Local doctors describe some of Calabria's hospitals as on a par with the developing world. Maybe this expose from the Financial Times will bring about an end to mafia asset-backed securities, but equally maybe my YouTube channel will become huge as I educate quant mobsters who can optimize the ABS portfolios and gain rating agencies. If you are a quant mobster, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, but equally be careful to say nothing in the comments section below. In the long run, I worry that quant mobsters will end up spending all of their time creating financial products and no longer care about the underlying extortion. If that becomes the case and there's no one left to break, we'll say, a hospital administrator's legs if they're laid with a payment, we could end up seeing widespread default on these products, which might bring about another financial crisis. Who knows?